I'm going to look this morning at the CERN Hadron Collider and some of the weird things about this and see how it ties in or does it tie in with what the Bible says is going to happen in the end times. So we're looking here, 10 mind-blowing facts about CERN Large Collider that you need to know about. Well, this is an impressive machine. It's the world's largest machine. This thing is nine billion dollars it's buried at a depth of up to 575 feet and it has a 17 mile long tunnel now this project has been going on for quite some time there was concern when it first fired up because it creates a large magnetic field so it has a massive gravitational pull and you can just read down through this amazing what this machine, the size of it, what it does. So it's it generates extreme temperatures. So huge magnetic field temperatures are, are extreme that it's created. Stephen Hawking was worried about that they were going to have bad things happen, that they would trigger a, a black hole to come into existence and could annihilate the planet. That sounds like it's far out there, which I believe it is, but I do believe there's something nefarious about what's going on here. It's, they say that they want to open a door to other dimensions, or that's a possibility. Now, they've had some weird things happen here where they've seen anomalies that they do believe they've opened into another dimension. What I believe they're seeing is demonic activity that they're, if I believe God has to allow them to, to see any of this or do any of this, but they're actually seeing things that are quite strange. And the as you get looking into this, you can take time. I'm not going to read all this stuff, go over this. You can look at this and search it out yourself. But where this place is built, it's built on an old temple site that was to... Apollo. You can read down here about that. And why was that place selected? Right here, you know, religious leaders always suspicious of the aims of the scientific world. Now, we're not suspicious of the aims of the scientific world. We're just interested in the, what they really want to do. You know, this transhumanism that's, that's being talked about and and these elitists who want to live forever, they want to, they're talking about downloading their consciousness into a machine. They think that they'll be able to do that someday, which sounds way out there. But I do believe if God would allow this world to continue, that would be possible. I mean, there's stuff that's that even with the, the phones we have today, if I were to have that, in my, if my grandmother was still alive, if she saw that, she would be blown away. She didn't think it was possible to have a flip phone. I remember her saying about you know, Star Trek, they'll never have anything like that with the communicators they used to have on the show. Well, we're far beyond that. But what's going on here, and they want to say about religious leaders being suspicious. No, we're just awake. We're the, we're the woke group in this world. We've been born again, and we understand that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but there's there's demonic activity. There's principalities and powers. And the God of this world, the little G God, is Satan. And he wants to destroy humanity. Now, notice here it says about how they re religious leaders drew a connection to a verse straight out of Revelation. They have Revelations, but Revelation 9, 1 and 2 and 11 which makes reference to the name of Pollyon. The verse states, to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and they had, that should be a king, not a kind, see that's how bad they are, they can't even copy stuff, right? A king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Now, now, now try telling a spiritual leader that, that the Bible is a conspiracy theory. Well, we know the Bible is the word of God and it's true and it's, it's going to happen just like he said. 
And isn't, isn't it amazing that those people that are so smart and so intellectual that they chose a spot named with the very name of the one that God says is king of this bottomless pit. And they want to try opening it up. They're, they want to tap into dark matter, right? And the CERN logo, you know, I'm going to, I'll go over here to a different screen where you can probably see it a little better. The CERN logo, six and six and six. You see the six, six, six. Why would a place that is supposed to be a scientific place to do experiments, you know, crashing these particles together, what, what they're looking for is what's called the, the God particle, what they refer to as the God particle. They want to simulate the Big Bang again, supposedly. Well, there never was a Big Bang. There's going to be a Big Bang at the end here when God causes everything to, to melt and be burned up. But the Big Bang they believe in is false. There is no Big Bang like they teach in our schools and our colleges. There's a creator that made everything in six literal days, and he has everything in a book that we can know what's coming. And when we see the number 666, you know, people associate that number with the devil, rightfully so, because it is it is the number of a man that's coming, and that man is going to be empowered by the devil, the 666. But why would CERN have 666? Very, very strange. So that's something interesting about CERN. And also this deity that they have. They have this Hindu goddess named Shiva, which she is named the goddess of destruction. You see a picture of her here. And why would they have that outside of a facility that is supposed to be science-based, supposed to be running experiments? And again, what... What I believe they're trying to do, and you, there's enough information given here that you can figure it out, that they are trying to open a portal into this bottomless pit, this place the Bible calls the bottomless pit, like they referred to. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at what they talked about here, here in Revelation chapter 9. Fifth angel sounded, a star fell from heaven onto the earth, and to him, so this is a, a being, an angel, was given the key to the bottomless pit. He opened that pit up, and notice there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke. And notice what happens here. Uh, there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and onto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And notice what they do. They torment those that don't have the seal of God in their foreheads. You read down through here, it was given unto them that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And it's going to be like getting stung by a, a scorpion. And these people, they're going to seek death, and the death will flee from them. They're not going to be able to die. And some people say, well, this, this is symbolic. No, this is literally the bottomless pit being opened up. And that bottomless pit, like they had in that article, they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, who, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abad, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So we see here that there is a, and this blows my mind, there is a king down in this earth, a place called the bottomless pit, and he's king over these creatures and over who knows what else, but these creatures that are released from there are going to come up and torment people for five months. Now, is God going to allow CERN to open a portal into this place it's, and have people seemingly believe that? Now, God's going to send an angel that's going to open that place. But maybe God will allow man to think that they've opened it up. However it happens, there's going to be deception. The devil, that's the key thing with the devil. He is a deceiver. He wants to deceive people. So, when this happens, those that deny the Bible, they'll have the plain scripture in front of them, and they can look and see that, and they'll, they'll refuse to believe that. They'll believe that, oh, this was created by some scientific experiment gone bad. That's what they'll believe. Another thing here about this bottomless pit, 
out of that bottomless pit also is coming a person. Notice down, if you look down here. And when they shall finish their testimony, these are the two witnesses. I believe it's Moses and Eli, or, yeah, Moses and Elijah, that preach during this time and tell people the truth. And during that time, then there's going to be a beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, coming up out of hell, and he's going to make war against them and he's going to overcome them and kill them. So this beast is coming out of this bottomless pit. Who the beast is, I would I would uh, say that it's Judas Iscariot. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Why I believe that, but I'm I'm convinced that that's exactly who it is. That that's who the Antichrist is going to be. It's going to be Judas Iscariot, the son of perdition. Anyway, but we're we're seeing some strange things here with CERN. You know what's really going on. You know is is it for the good? Is it a good scientific experiment or is it just something else that's going on that the devil's allowing people to do? And it's all pushing as a means of, of opening this place that is, is shut. It's under key. God is going to take, and I'll show you here, we'll go back to the, the end of Revelation chapter number 19. And we'll look about what what happens at the end here? Revelation 19. The Bible says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that had worshipped his image. These both were cast alive in the lake, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. This is after Armageddon. And these are cast into the lake of fire. And then we have an angel come down from heaven again and having the key. Now that back in chapter 9, he was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now this guy has the key to the bottomless pit. And a great chain in his hand, he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. And set a seal on him that he should not deceive the nations, that he should deceive the nations no more, to the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed for a season. He's not going to escape. He's going to be loosed. God's going to loose him. And notice that he's going to be locked away in this bottomless pit. And then if you read down through here, verse 7 says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. He's not going to escape, he'll be loosed. And then there's going to be the last rebellion against God, and God's going to squelch that thing very quickly. And then we're going to get off into eternity where the great white throne judgment takes place. And then we enter into eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But it's so interesting to me now that we're seeing very bizarre things going on in the world. And CERN, why 666? Why Shiva, the goddess of destruction. Why is it built on the temple that was for Apollyon, for Apollo? Interesting stuff. And the Bible, it's not a conspiracy theory. The Bible is clear. The Bible has predicted the future. And to ignore that is to basically lead to your destruction. God wants to save you. God wants you to know the truth. These things are interesting to a lot of people that look on and they say, oh, this is interesting. God, you know, the, the Bible says this. And they, they think it's neat to know, but yet they have no desire to know and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't follow the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't get saved, you will spend eternity in the lake of fire. And that's where the devil's going to end up. Notice here, look down through here. And the devil's left out of his prison. And then the devil, the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I want you to think back in Revelation 19 is a thousand years before this. 
That beast and the false prophet were taken and cast into the lake of fire, and they've been there for 1,000 years at this point when the devil is cast into that lake of fire along with them. And forever and ever and ever, they will suffer in a place called hell. After this, the great white throne judgment. This is an awful thing. Awful that, that men have to to be judged for their sin because they could have been saved. They could have had forgiveness through the Lord Jesus Christ and they rejected him. I'm just going to read this and I'll close. Verse 11 says, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. I mean, people that people like you and I and the normal man that's that's just small, not, not hardly known, just a, just a few friends. You know, you have your family and a few friends and not a, a person known greatly in the community. But then there's going to be the great, the great, the world leaders that have had led countries. And they're going to stand before God and the books were opened. So there's books. God keeps a record of every sin ever committed. You can have a thought that God says is sin. And there's plenty of actions that are sins. There's going to be books opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. You know, when God brings up sin, there's plenty of sin in everyone's lives that would be enough to damn you. One lie would be enough to send your soul to hell for eternity. Now, people say, well, that isn't fair. Well, there's different levels of hell. There's there's going to be less punishment, and I don't know how that's going to work out, but less punishment for, for those that didn't know the way and, and that didn't get saved. But for the ones that knew the truth and rejected the truth, they had it clearly given to them, and they decided they were going to live on in sin, and they just continued on and on and rejected the God that, that offered them mercy and grace that loving God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day, that we could get our sins forgiven. They rejected that God, and they continued on in their sin. They loved their, their booze. They loved their drugs. They loved their pornography. They loved their fornication. Whatever sin they got involved with, they loved it more than they loved God, more than they wanted to, to spend eternity with God. So God will give people over to a reprobate mind. That's what we're living in right now. We're seeing a wicked world with a reprobate mind calling evil good and good evil. Verse 14 says, And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Awful judgment coming. These people playing around with CERN, they think that they're going to, you know, see the God particle recreate the Big Bang and try to disprove there's a God, they're going to have something unleashed on them that they have no idea what's coming. Stephen Hawking, you know, he's, I guarantee you now, he's not in a good place. Stephen Hawking, though, he was concerned about what was going on at CERN. He was worried about this world being destroyed with what was going to be opened up. You read the book of Revelation, and you'll find out that this world is going to be wrecked. And it's going to be wrecked by the hand of the Almighty God, who has had his fill with man's rebellion. Here in a little while, God's going to take home all those that have put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, those which have been born again. God's going to take them out of this earth, and all hell is going to break loose in this earth. The Bible says that, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Just call on him today. Trust him that he died for your sin. He made the payment for your sin when he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. He was buried. He rose again the third day. He's victorious over sin, over death, over hell, over the grave. And he offers to you eternal life if you'll but believe in him. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, it's, it's a gift. Call on Jesus Christ today. If, if, if you feel that tug on your heart, it's the Holy Ghost of God telling you 
that you're lost and you need a savior. And don't harden your heart. You harden your heart, you'll end up going to hell. God says, today is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. Let Jesus Christ save your soul. Call on him today and trust him as your savior.